Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the US, and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. We are live because it is Valentine's Day, uh, February 14th, um, 2024, at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm coming to you live. So happy Valentine's to all of you who are celebrating. And um, I don't have any heart projects today, but I have some really cute things to share. I have bundles. And these bundles are two of my favorites from the January through April 2024 mini catalog. So uh, let me introduce them to you. The uh, Cutest Cows Bundle and the Submarine Life Bundle. We're gonna make some amazing cards, cards that will wow your recipients. Um, they're called Hexagon Platform Pop-Up Cards. Now this is a part one video of a two-part series. And the reason why is because this card is pretty intense <laughs> as far as details. This would be better maybe as a pre-recorded video, but um, I thought, well, if I do two cards, then you're getting a card from each of the, I don't know. Anyways, I tried to justify it, but I wanted to go live with this um, just because it's amazing and I wanted you to see it. Um, and I didn't want to pre-record it. <laughs> I don't know. I love lives. I love doing lives. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the Valentine's Day wishes. It's so fun to see your comments roll in. Um, so yes, we're doing this live. So the Submarine Life Cutest Cows from the January through April 2024 mini catalog. So what does that mean, a two-part series, Rachel? Well, that means that today we're going to do um, bits and pieces of each of the cards. And then next week, I'm going to finish them. And um, <laughs> I think doing this card twice will really help a lot of you too, who maybe aren't avid crafters but want to be. So we're gonna do the easier parts today, but they're more time consuming because they're coloring and things like that. And then next week, we're actually gonna do the base and assemble the cards. So a big welcome to all of you, um, especially if you are new, um, and especially if you keep coming back. Thank you. And also a big welcome to Trisha Josephs, who's my moderator on YouTube, and Lisa Marshall, my moderator on Facebook. They are here to answer questions for you, and um, I hope that we all have fun. I would love to know more about you, so please share in the comments something that um, happened in your childhood that was fun, something fun from your childhood that you want to share. Now don't put too much thought into this, just rattle something off because it's fun for me to get to know you as well. Um, I get emails and calls and um, texts and things like that and sometimes people share with me and I love that. That really helps me to get to know you too. So, all right. So, oh my gosh, I'm just rattling because I'm having, I'm, I'm so excited about these cards. So we're going to start with the cutest cows card. The Cutest Cows card is um, one that I'm gonna share with you after we've done some parts and pieces, and then I'll share, you, share with you what the card looks like. You kind of have a hint from it if you're looking at the preview for the videos. And then I'll share the measurement supply list for that. Today, for my blog post, because I always have a blog post that's connected to my video, today you will be able to download that PDF that has the uh, measurements and supplies and photos of the cows version of the card. And you'll be able to see photos of it and all of that stuff. All of that will be in today's blog post. Then next week when I do part two, the video for part two, then, sorry, I have to click a button here. Um, then you'll be able to see the Submarine Life full card uh, with its measurements and all of that, the supply list. So if you wanted to recreate these cards, you could um, by checking out these two videos. Okay, um, cutest cows, let's dive in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the consumables that we need for the Cutest Cows card. And um, we're going to be using this designer paper. It's called Masterfully Made. It's one of my favorites. And it has all of these beautiful um, tiny flowers that have an aerial view to them. So this will be great because the cows are going to be sitting in kind of a, a little floral field, okay? So we're gonna use that, but we won't really use this until next week. So I'm gonna set that aside. Actually, I'm not gonna set it aside. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna set it aside for now, and I'll show you the full line of paper next week for that. We're also gonna use 
some gold foil paper. This is gonna be the part that wraps around the card. So I have a strip that is cut to 12 inches because the paper comes 12 by 12. And it is one and three quarter inches tall. It won't be this big. We're actually going to um, cut, the, cut it down a little bit in this direction. But that will be the part we wrap. We need some squares, and these squares are all one and five eighths inches tall, so they're just slightly smaller than the gold foil as far as that goes, and they're all one and uh, five eighths by one and five eighths. There are six of them because a the hexagon is six sided. So we have six of those pieces. We also have a scrap of that same color. This is pretty peacock, and we'll be using the scrap today to punch some hills. We have a couple little um, label pieces. This is for our sentiment. We have a piece that is one inch by one and seven eighths, so almost two inches. You could make it two if you want to. I'm just kind of catering, catering it towards the um, sentiment piece that I have. And then this one's just an eighth of an inch smaller in each direction. Uh, again, you'll be able to download the PDF that has the measurements, but this is seven eighths inches tall by one and three quarter. Then we have our white piece. Now we're going to cut uh, a couple pieces from this right now, but we're gonna set most of it aside for next week because this is going to become the base of the card. If you're worried about being able to do this card, again, it's gonna be a two-part series. So I think doing the card twice in two different versions, but also doing it slower will help a lot of you who are more casual crafters or whatever, feel like you can accomplish an avid card. Okay, so we're gonna take our trimmer and we're gonna cut it in this direction so that we have nine inches on this side, two inches on this side. I'm just extending the arm of my trimmer so you can see that we do have nine inches. Plus you want this length to be exact rather than this, because this is gonna become a scrap. So you kind of want to make sure that your nine inches is exactly nine inches. And then we're gonna trim in this direction and we're going to trim at seven, okay? So get exact as exact as you can with your base pieces, seven inches. That leaves us one and a half inches here for this white piece. This we're gonna save for next week when we make the base of our card. This piece will be scored and then cut into two pieces. So we're gonna set that aside. Again, it is seven inches by nine right now. This is our scrap, we'll be using parts of that today. I'm gonna to set my trimmer over here for now. We'll put the white piece back here. Let's grab our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I have an embossing folder that is so, so pretty. We're gonna take, oops, not that one, the skinnier one. We're gonna take the piece that is nine by one and a half inches and we're going to emboss it. So um, I think the best way to do this so that we don't have uh, pieces that we're trying to blend together because we can't fit this whole entire thing into the embossing folder is for us to cut it into two equal parts. So we're gonna cut it to four and a half inches in this direction. That will give us two pieces that are four and a half by one and a half. Now we can set them into our embossing folder. Our embossing folder, sorry, I forgot to tell you the name. The embossing folder is called Layered Florals. It is also new. It debuted in the January through April mini catalog. Now, if you are um, someone that's new to Stampin' Up! products, I just want you to know that you can shop for these products without having the actual catalog. You can go to, do, 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 do. You can go to um, stampinup.com or if you don't have a demonstrator or you're not a demonstrator yourself, you can go to my website, stampyourartout.com and there are a lot of shop buttons that are direct there. Plus this is where I house all my things, all my ideas, my projects, all that kind of stuff. So um, stampyourartout.com is where you can find links to these things. So layered florals. So once you click on the shop button and you go to the store, you just put in layered or florals, you'll find it. It's a beautiful 3D embossing folder. It embosses very deep and um, it's just stunning the um, flower designs that you can come up with with this. So I'm gonna lay these in here, kind of like right in those spots. And 
Then we're gonna run them through. We have our platform. So with a Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, you get platform number one, you get your die adapter base, which is really thin. So if you're die cutting, you get two cutting mats. Um, they get scratchy. This is the part that you replace after some time if you love your machine and you use it a lot. And then you also get this gray folder. I have a little piece of something in here. I'm going to, oh, it's on the outside, okay. Um, then you get this gray folder and it's number one, uh, four and that helps with 3D embossing. So you don't use the die adapter plate or the cutting mats or whatever when you're using a 3D embossing folder. You just put it right on the platform, stick your gray plate on top. Oh, and I do have my seam, the part where it folds, going into the rollers first. So basically this type of machine has two rollers and a handle that cranks it through those two rollers. Um, the rollers press on the paper or press on, you know, the items that are in there, cardstock, designer paper, whatever. Puts pressure on it and then you get these beautiful um, either die cut pieces or designs that are embossed. It's just a fun, fun way to get some instant art. We'll pop, put these off to the side again. We'll bring this back in and we'll do some trimming. Okay, so we are gonna assemble parts of the base today. I'm just gonna trim all of these to one and a half inches. You wanna have a sharp blade when you are cutting because if you have an embossed piece or even a piece that has a fold in it anywhere and you don't have a sharp blade, what you could end up doing is tearing your paper. So four and a half divided by three is one and a half. So we have one and a half by one and a half inch squares. We'll cut this one at one and a half and also this one. And now we have six squares ready to layer onto our pretty peacock squares. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do that right now. Now, if you want to, you can keep them in order. So if you take and flip these little designs here, I forgot, I forgot to keep them in order. We're not gonna do that, I guess, but you could. <laughs> and then um, it's kind of fun when you go around the paper to see how those work. If I had an assistant right here in the room, I'd have them do this for me, but I don't. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna put them on however. Okay, Rachel screwed that up. That's okay, that's okay. Um, the finished card, by the way, will be um, the one that's already done is photographed on the blog. And that one already has the design. So what I did is I kept these images together, I guess is what I'm saying, in a puzzle piece fashion. And then I added them <clears throat> going around the, the card because the card is a hexagon platform. So it has a, um, it pops into a, a little hexagon. Here, let me show you one that I haven't, um, here. This is a hexagon platform card. So it looks like a hexagon and this is the inside. And then these, this is what we're doing right now. We're making the little panels for it. This is how it folds up and goes into an envelope. This is my guacamole one. See, it fits into an envelope. Um, my guacamole one I made about a year ago, <laughs> almost to the date, a year ago. There is a link, by the way, in the blog post that will go live today. And you can see these, um, the card here. And I also did another version based on some other pattern. It's a little slightly larger, but really cute. Love that, love those cards. So yeah, this is the hexagon platform look. That's what we're going for. So we're making the parts and pieces that go around and um, we just layer these on like this. And I'm using seal adhesive here. You could use your multi-purpose liquid glue. I will be using that glue in other stages. So we'll make sure that we have that nearby. So if you really want to impress someone with a fun card, or little kids, they love getting interactive cards, right? I did a little boo-boo, so we're gonna bring the glue in. I tore it a bit. Um, so they love getting interactive cards. So this is uh, a great card idea to make for someone who is younger, because they can just sit and pop open their card there we go, fixed it. 
maybe a reason to use glue and not the seal adhesive. Okay, now that we have those done, we're going to work with this piece here. The first thing I wanna do with it is I'm going to punch out the little horn, horns of the bull. So if you're looking at this cow, you can put these on the cow and make little horns, right? So it can be a, what would that be, a bull then, right? <laughs> okay, but we're gonna use it in a different way. So I've got that set. Now I'm gonna bring my trimmer back in and I'm going to score, if this is one and three quarter inches, I'm gonna score every one and three quarter inches to make squares. We'll move our cutting blade out of the way and we'll press one and three quarter, oops. Hang on a minute. One and three quarter, then we go to three and a half, cause that's one and three quarter plus one and three quarter. Then we're going to go to five and a quarter, seven, eight and three quarter, and 10 and a half, 10 and a half. Okay, good. Now we've got our six panels, one, two, three, four, five, six, but we need a, a little area to connect them to so that when we go all the way around the card, we have a little area that overlaps. And here's my, over, my little overlapping area here. So I've got a half inch little section there. So we're gonna bring it down one more half inch to 11 inches and use the dark blade now and slice. So you can see why we were able to use a little scrap of that on the end. That's all we needed. Now we'll take and fold these. Lay them out and add our panels. And when you fold them, you have a little bit more um, idea of where the fold is. Uh, now I do have some good lighting here, but sometimes, especially with just regular cardstock and not like a metallic-y kind of foil cardstock, it helps to give a little bend back and forth and get that fold showing a bit more. I'm going to bring in my little glue holder here instead so I can hold this upside down in it. It'll help the glue to stay towards the tip. You know, another advantage to not putting them all in the same order here is that you can turn your flowers however you want. <laughs> so there, I meant to do that, right? <laughs> so what stories are you guys telling me about from your childhood, from when you were younger? Something happy, something wonderful that you wanna share. I would love to read them later. Okay, so we have those all onto our strip. This is the part again that will wrap around the card. So we're gonna set that aside because we don't need this today yet. We're gonna do the base next week. We've got some scraps here. Remember this scrap? This one's bigger than this one, so this is the one we're gonna stamp on and this will become a layer for it. So we're gonna grab our base, I'm sorry, our Tuxedo Black and our Berry Burst inks. Here's the stamp set again. I'm gonna be using the word Holy Cow in the pink color, so very burst. And I'll be using the congratulations in the tuxedo black. When you take your stamps out when they're photopolymer, because photopolymer likes to um, bend and twist and it's very flexible, I think it's best to put it on a surface where it can kind of relax. Then you take your ink pad, I'm sorry, your block, and you just press on the back side and you pick it up. And that way there's no curves in it. So we've got our two stamps. I'm going to stamp the um, congratulations first, and that's gonna go at the base of this piece here. So we're gonna set that right down here. So we have about an eighth of an inch on the bottom and on the sides, and then we'll ink up the holy cow, and we'll stamp that right above, like so. Okay, this piece will get mounted onto this piece and we'll just do it with some seal adhesive again. This is gonna go on the front of our card. Remember on the guacamole card, we had that 
little sentiment here. So that's sort of how this is going to act on our other card. So we'll set that back there because we're done with it. And we'll put these up and out of the way. Let's move on to our cows. It's cow time. Okay, we have hills and we have a scrap of white. Here it is. This is our scrap of white. And we're going to stamp these cute little cows now. So one of my favorite things to um, use for coloring, because we want to color our cows, are blends markers. But you could use Stampin' Write markers. You could use, um, you know, like a blender pen and dip it into uh, your ink pad uh, ink, or like, you know, when you put a clear block on your ink pad and it has ink on it, dip it into that area. That's probably the best. Let's see, we need a couple heads here. We need one that's winking, and we have the regular one, and we have the body. Oh, and we also need the milk can, like that. Okay, we're using quite a bit, quite a few stamps on here. So we're using this one, this one, this body, this body, and um, gosh, you could make lots of different cows with all the head and body combinations here. And then we've got cute little birdies in there, little chickens and roosters and a chickadee. Um, sunflowers and these are little faces so if you wanted to do actually this is the snout and mouth area and the eyes so if you wanted to just um, punch and then put together the image of the cow without these outline areas you could too Pinterest or Google the name of this and you'll be able to see lots of ideas with it already people are having fun with this so we're gonna have that cow um, image relaxed pick it up ink it up and we'll stamp that onto our um, let me shoot let me just look at my okay so my punch is like this so I'm gonna punch it up towards the top a bit right about there let me just check oh I went oh what I went a little too never mind we're gonna have to trim it up a little bit now I went too high, the punch won't reach. Okay, now the punch will reach. And then we've also got the head of the cow. So let's grab another block and ink that up. And we can punch that one down here and have the other head on the other side. Because these two can be punched from the end of the punch like this. So that should work. And then we also need um, some pieces that we're going to fussy cut. Let me set these over here. So we're going to take and stamp these two. These glass mats, by the way, grab onto your photopolymer. So I'm gonna put that here instead. There we go. That way it doesn't have that cling already before we put it onto the clear block. So we want that stamped down. And we also need the milk crate, which won't bend too much. And we'll just stamp that one right there. I'm going to stamp that one again. That one does not look right. We'll stamp that one right there. That's better. Okay. We'll put these stamps over here. It is time to color. I feel like it's better to color first and then to punch or die cut because if you mess up on the coloring, then you didn't have to go through the work of doing the, the die cutting that was unnecessary, right? So we're gonna now do some coloring and coloring is so much fun with blends. Um, the thing that I've got here is the Smoky Slate so I've got Smoky Slate Light and Smoky Slate Dark. I've also got the colors Petal Pink in the light and the dark. And with Stampin' Up, our blends, oops, bring it in the camera here, our blends markers come in pairs. So you can um, easily do some like gradient or shading kind of looks. We'll start with the light of our Smoky Slate. And I'm looking at my finished one. There it is. We're going to do the hair. 
the hair. We've got some hair on our cow right here and here on the tops of their heads. And then I'm also going to do the milk crate. I've already crossed that one off. I don't want to do that one. Um, and for the milk crate, I'm going to do the whole thing except for the right side here. Just a little spot that I'm going to leave. I have fuzz on the end here. A little spot that I'm going to leave white right through there for shine. That's the shine. Ta-da! Okay, now to give it even more depth, let's bring in the dark color. And we'll just add a little bit on the side here, on the side here. And then over here, we're going to add a bit of darker gray and on the handles. Now, the next step is to go back to the light. I, I like that pattern. My pattern is light, dark, light when you're using blends, alcohol-based markers. So for this, we're just going to kind of blend those right between. And for here, we're going to go in between. Kind of a circular motion helps to get those two different colors kind of going together. Okay. Now we have the grays done on the milk crate. Let's go back to our dark gray. And I think what I did, yes, I think I just, no, I, I did light. I did light. I was going to say, did I just do the dark? But I did light first on all of these little spots. And normally your, your spots would be black, right? You'd have a black and white cow. But we're going with gray because um, then we can get a little more cartoonish with it and we can have um, some shading going on in there. We do have some black blends, by the way. There's a light and a dark black, believe it or not. I just did not try that with this card. Let's come in with the dark and I'm looking at my finished one. We're just going to do little dark sections here. Here and here. We'll just go across the hooves. Do they call them hooves? I don't know. Um, there. We've got some color, some shading going on there. And then we're going to bring in the light one again and do some blending with it. You guys can see this, right? I hope so. Okay. You barely have to touch it too. Um, something that you might want to note is that underneath here I do not have any scrap paper. That is because I'm using the glass mat. So if I have any ink that comes through, I can wipe this off later on. It's cleanable. It Like the blends markers don't stain it. It's so awesome. Okay, the next thing is the faces. The faces and the ears. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of pink to the mouth, the little muzzle area here of our cow. And then I'm gonna come in with the dark pink. And we do have two tips, but I tend to go towards the brush tip rather than the, um, the more bullet tip or whatever. I just, like, I just like having the fine tip and then the larger mass amount so to be able to color in larger areas. I don't use that other tip very often. But you can. And then underneath the ears, have a little bit of pink. Okay, we've got that part done. Now we're gonna move into the punching. And I think I'm gonna take and separate these guys because they're going to get fussy cut. So we're gonna line up the head and punch it out. Line up the head and punch it out. And this head, this head, you guys, both of them line up with this punch. Makes it a very versatile bundle. And then the cow's body, oops, we have to go even deeper. <laughs> Rachel inked that up too high, or inked up the paper too high. Stamped it down too high, that's what it is. Okay, we're lining that up. 
and punching that out. And now we have a fun paper mess everywhere. Yay. Okay, we've got our cow's bodies, except for this one. And this one's pretty easy to cut out. I'm gonna encourage you to keep some space on the bottom of each of these images because we are going to be tucking them into the card. You also need a little bit of space in this area. So we're just gonna cut the body like this because that'll help us to attach the head. So we'll go around the tail. It's a pretty easy one to cut out. And I think, yep, we can just go straight down. That's all you need on that one. Pretty easy to fussy cut around. And then on this one, same thing. And I'm having, I have like about a 16th of an inch all the way around my um, images here of white space. So I'm just leaving that white space. It just um, makes it pop more. Makes it easier for it to stand out. So there's that other piece. We'll take and add these items all of these items to our trash. I do have a trash here, you guys. Sometimes I forget to use it. Okay, so we have all of those. And then the next step is to make a couple hills. So I'm just gonna punch this. In fact, let's trim it so we don't waste all of that cardstock. I'm just trimming about just under I don't know, like an inch and a half or something. I'm just gonna trim it. So I have two of these um, cow bodies here. I just want the bodies. <laughs> it's a party. You guys, that would be a great idea. You go to an event and you bring your cardstock and your punches and you just punch. Keep punching, punch, punch, punch. All of that cardstock out and you can just have constant confetti going on at a party. Okay, we have our cow bodies. And we have extra cardstock for something else later on. These are going to become hills. They're just going to get stacked in the card so that our cow sits on the hill. So those are done. These guys are done. I think those are all done. Except for, no, we got this piece. Okay, so we pull that in. We've got it all. And I'm just going to check it out to make sure we've got it all. We do. So now I'm going to show you the finished cow card. And I'm going to pull up here the uh, PDF, so you can take a peek at that. So let's do this first. Yay, here's the finished cow card. This is what it's gonna look like. Next week, we're going to complete this, all right? So it goes down like this, oops, goes down like this, and folds in and goes into an envelope. <laughs> and then when you open it, you just pop it in place. And I have a pattern for my inside pieces here that are a little bit different than what you may have seen out there. Because what I did, <laughs> Rachel loves math. What I did is I saw a finished card and I got inspired so much that I decided I was gonna figure out how to make it before I got any patterns from anyone. I just looked at the finished card and I said, I can do this. So basically you have these little places where these guys tuck in, right? And I did, I came up with my own pattern. So um, I'll be sharing that pattern with you next week. The card can fold this way, it can fold this way. The nice thing about this is that when you press it in place, it stays in place. Like it's like a really tight fit in here. Um, there's where that designer paper comes in. Remember we were talking about how it's nice to have that little flower field. So, and you can see where all the other pieces are kind of coming together, right? Do you get it? Holy cow. And then we have a little halo on one of our cows. <laughs> a friend of mine used to what? Let me read that, Paul, uh, Patricia. Um, send all of her cards with confetti tucked inside. <laughs> she goes, I learned to open them over the garbage can. <laughs> yeah, that is fun. Okay, so that was the cutest cows card. Now let's go to the computer. And I want you to see this is the PDF that you'll be able to print off. Then we'll go back to the desktop and we're gonna do the parts and pieces for the submarine card. And then next week again, we'll come back and we'll do the whole finished cards of each. But today you'll be able to go to my blog post in 45 minutes 
and you'll be able to click on the link that's in the description of the video that you're watching. If you're watching on Facebook, I'm going to transfer the stuff that's on YouTube over to the Facebook one so you can get that. And you'll um, click on that link. You'll be able to get this PDF, which is basically a measurement supply photo date and name sheet. Okay, it doesn't give written directions. It doesn't have a video attached to it, but you'll be able to download that sheet as a reference so that you can know where to come back to later on on my website at stampyourartout.com to find it later on. So here is the measurements. They're basic measurements. I put base measurements because you're going to be doing things to that three and a half by nine paper or what I said earlier is we have it seven by nine. We're going to cut it in half after we put the score lines in. So um, all of those are just base measurements and then you have the supply list and then next week you can get the one for the submarine life one and you'll be able to with the combination of the two videos be able to put these cards together because you'll have all the information for both okay let's go back to the desktop and let's work on the submarine life one okay for the submarine life one we're gonna bring in well, let me give you the submarine life. Let me let me show you that first, okay? We're gonna take that and where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Okay, submarine life. So here is the bundle and we're too far zoomed in now, Rachel. Go back a little bit. Um, this is the submarine life bundle. You can see we've got a submarine that punches out. We've got the little propello, propeller or whatever you wanna call it. We've got the um, scope. And we've got water streaks, you know, like the movement of the um, submarine. We've got like the base of the um, underwater where the, the ground of the, the fishy area is. Um, and then we've got sea life and they're all wearing these cute little goggles, you guys. So cute. Um, some sentiments. We're going to be using the one that says you are sublime because that just works so well with the submarine. And if you look up the word, because I, I, I don't use that word a lot, although it might be one that's more trendy nowadays, but it just means like amazing, you are amazing. Um, so let's do the parts and pieces of that. And again, this card will fit into, and I think what I have to do is clean off my blocks. This part will fit, this card will fit into a regular envelope. So um, you'll want to invest in these, and I forgot to put them on the supply list. I'll try to transfer that over there. Okay, and we're gonna get these things out of the way. Clean off our stamps. While we are cleaning up to move on to the second card set of pieces, I do want to tell you that I have this awesome set of trays that I need to pull out and use more often because all my little pieces especially like these little guys here could be stored in these trays. These are called hex trays and they're magnetic too. So when you're working with like little dies, they stay in your trays. So while we're doing, doing hexagon shaped cards, I wanted to introduce you to these because they just added a new size. And who's they? My friends at the Country Hive. They just added a larger size. This is the five inch magnetic hex tray. So now you have three sizes to work with, lots of different color options. There is a link in the video description. So I'm gonna keep these here in my workspace because I wanna make sure that I don't lose those parts and pieces. I'm gonna put these guys in here too. My little tiny pieces that I've already cut and I'll talk about them in just a minute. Let's clean off our stamps. I'm just using my scrub and mist and we're going to put the mist on one side and do a quick scrub and dry okay so we're going to transfer over into a whole nother set of stamps we got a lot to a lot of these to mount do i have all my blocks i feel like I, oh here's a couple more wash and dry wash and dry. This is my favorite type of thing to use for cleaning my stamps. I do love the scrub and mist, but we do have things called chamois too, and all you do is add water to them, and you have like instant little cleanup wipes. So let's peel these guys off. And I'm going to set these back here. Hopefully, you know what? I'll put them in a hex tray. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to set them in here and put them on my back table so that I don't lose them. 
They're gonna go into my other set. Now let's open up this one. We have the submarine. Let's peel off this adhesive or this uh, paper here, plastic. And again, I want this not to have any bend in it, so I want it to relax a little minute. We've got the propeller. We've got the um, uh, you know scope. Um, and then we got these tiny little guys here. These are so cute, you guys. I love it when they're wearing goggles. We better put a couple of these on the locks here. Okay, that one's ready. That one's ready. I need some smaller, some smaller um, blocks. Let me go grab my smaller ones. And I think I'm using the Sublime one, did I say? And I have one more. This little guy here, I think I have them all. Okay, you know what these are for, you guys, these little pieces here? You can actually take and mount your stamps directly into your containers. I never do that. I like to take my stamps and walk around with them separate from the, from the box. I don't know why. So, <laughs> but you can mount them directly into your box. Uh, let me grab a couple more blocks. We have this one for that. This one uses a lot more stamps. I, do you see how I'm mounting my stamps too? I'm putting them on diagonally. It just helps them not paying attention to the actual um, stamp or the block. I'm using, I'm using the stamp image to guide me in my stamping. Okay, we have all of our stamps mounted. So what do you have here, Rachel? What is this? These are pieces that are already cut and we just need to cut a few more and we're bringing in some dies for this one. So this card, if you're looking at material, I used a lot more material as far as expense goes. The card is just as cute, but if you're a person who likes to collect sets of dies, the circles that are in the stargazing set of dies are wonderful. Lots of different size circles. So I'm using the one that's about one and three eighths inches. Let's just grab a ruler. Uh, yep. And then I'm using a circle from this one. This is the uh, Stylish Shapes dies. And that one fits within. It's just a little bit smaller. And then I'm also using these dies, the Beauty of the Deep dies because they have some sea life things and specifically these little guys, which are what? The plants that go underwater. So it's a little more pricey of a card. I've already cut out from Lemon Lime Twist card stock, the sea life ones, right? I've got these Beauty of the Deep ready to go. So all of these I can put aside in another hex tray back here okay so i've got them i've also got two pieces of clear uh window sheets they are one by one and a half inches they're going to help for mounting some pieces into our card i've got a little scrap of this hologra holographic foil sheet stuff and i've also got one two three four five, six of those circles, and I have five. I need to cut one more of these circles. So we'll do that. And we'll put those back in here. Okay, but we also, I think, let me look at my finished one. Nope, that's the only other die cutting we have left. So, and I can do that off camera later on because you've, uh, no, we haven't done any die cutting. We should do some die cutting. For those of you that haven't done die cutting, let's bring that machine back in. Now I'm gonna use this post-it tape that I have hanging on here. We're gonna change out the, the platform. So we've got number one, but we're not gonna use the gray now. This time we're gonna use the die adapting plate and the two cutting mats, because we're not using an embossing folder. So we're bringing in this die adapter plate, the scratchier of my two cutting mats, my paper, my die with the cutting side down, and my other cutting mat on top. And we crank it through just like we did with the embossing folder. 
and this is what I did for the um, for the plant life and the other circles and stuff and now I have a perfectly cut out circle that post-it tape I keep on there just in case I need to tack something in place so it doesn't move on me but yeah we've got all of that set aside for our card let's work on our stamping um, this scrap is now look at that I saved paper I can use the rest of that later on yay so we have our scrap paper um, and I think I'll just grab this one because this one I was going to cut another circle from we're going to stamp and punch so we need our submarine and we're going to use calypso coral ink what a perfect color name for a submarine card right calypso coral ink up our submarine stamp grab that punch where's that punch over here so you can see how that's going to punch out so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this a little bit skinnier. Let's just take and measure this. About two inches. Let's cut this so that we have two inches. There. Let's stamp our submarine on here, and that will make it easier for punching and not wasting our cardstock. Stamping that down, pressing firmly. Beautiful. And then we just open up our punch. This is the lock that opens up our punch. It keeps it flat. And when we want to use it, we push it forward. We're going to line up our image. And punch it out. Not too much wasted, right? Good job. Okay, so we have that piece. Now let's do the propeller. And we could probably do that. Let's look at the punch again. We could put the propeller right there. So now we're gonna uh, switch inks and we're gonna move to Smoky Slate. The, to open up the pads, by the way, you just lift. You just hold onto the sides and lift, okay? So there's the propeller. We're gonna stamp that in Smoky Slate right there. Punch that out. Sorry, I have to tip it a little towards me so I can see. So there's that one confetti party again okay and then let's get that scope let's see if we can fit the scope in here too let's move over to that stamp where'd it go here it is so this one will get punched out that way can we fit it <laughs> if we get creative no we're not going to do we're not going to do that no challenges rachel okay so we can kind of angle it down like that in the corner and I didn't stamp it right. Do that again. Okay, so there's our little scope. Like that. So yes, be wise when you are when you are punching your your images out. Don't don't put something right in the middle of your scrap and then line. I mean, you've you've wasted a bunch of paper. We still have this left. We do need from our scraps. We need another submarine body. So I'm going to punch one out here. So there's another submarine body. And then we need, I'm looking at my finished card over here. We need another title. And our title piece is, I believe, the same as our other one. Yes, it is. Seven eighths inches, so just under an inch there. By one and three quarter inches. And we're not gonna layer our title, we're just gonna stamp it as is. So these all become scrap. Grab my garbage, toss it all in. Okay, we have more stamping though, don't we? Because we have other colors and we have those white pieces and we have all those stamps. Um, so these are ready. I'm gonna set them in the ready hexagon tray with this die so we don't lose it. These are ready because, oh, actually this is not ready yet. Um, the, the holographic circles are ready. The clear window sheets are ready. But these we have to stamp. Okay, so let's get to working on these next. Let's stamp the title. We're using Night of Navy ink and we're using Lemon Lime Twist Ink. For the title, we'll use our 
Knight of Navy ink. We want our title or our sentiment, I suppose we could say, to stand out on our card, but we don't want it to be like taking over. So I did stamp it once with Calypso Coral ink, put it on the card, and then I thought, it's taking away from the main image. It's taking away from the submarine. So we want it to stand out, but we don't want it to be the star. So there's our title. That's done. We can close up this ink. And then for our little creatures here, and we have six of them, we have six blocks. We're gonna use our lemon lime twist color. We'll stamp our fishy on one of the circles. I love this guy. He's so cute. A little snorkel on there. We've got our starfish. I'll ink that one up here. Now these are circles. So the only thing we have to make sure we do is press evenly when we stamp because um, we can turn the circle however we want. <laughs> we'll stamp that down. These are so cute, aren't they? We've got these fish um, and they come in a set of three. So we have to fit them on here in the best way possible. And I fit them on like that so that we don't cut off someone's face. For this one, this is the uh, jellyfish. We're gonna stamp that right here. <laughs> They're so cute. I love these images. And then we've got these tiny little minnowy kind of fish. And um, I decided to have some that were going off in that direction. So I did cut off a face there, but then I took these other ones and I went back the opposite direction above and below. And what we have here is a school of fish. <laughs> okay, for our submarine, we have these three windows. So I grabbed from my office supplies, my old punch from when I was a teacher. And it's a, just a quarter inch circle punch. If you have a quarter inch circle punch, that's all you need. And you just come in and you punch those little windows. It used to have a, a little thing on the bottom here. This is the bottom, I've got it upside down. But I took it off because I like to see where I punch. Okay, we've got those holes in there. And then we grab our glue and we're just going to put a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue. This is the glue that I'm using by the way, multi-purpose liquid glue and it's in this cute little egg container. Love it. It is from the Country Hive. Um, they have some really great storage products. So we're just going to put a little glue around the sides of these windows. Then we're gonna take this holographic sheet. Hang on, I gotta grab it with my fingers. And we gotta be careful here not to get any of this glue in the wrong place. So I'm picking it up, okay? I've got the windows covered with that. And now I'm gonna take my other piece, which is my blank one that I didn't stamp on, and that's gonna sandwich it. So now I can put adhesive on this. And you wanna make sure you put an adhesive on the correct side so that they can sandwich together. So I'm just gonna put a little glue around here. And when I sandwich these together, I'm also going to insert, I should probably use uh, seal adhesive on this first, hang on. I'm gonna put a little seal adhesive on this because window sheets work really well with seal. Okay, we've got seal adhesive on there. Now I've got my submarine and I'm adding my seal and my window sheet. And now I'm gonna take this piece and go right on top like that. Lift it up, you have a little bit of wiggle room time. Oh my goodness, is that adorable? Now go clean off your fingers. <laughs> Sometimes we get glue on our fingers. We just have to use the other fingers as we craft, right? We have to switch them all out. So I think for this, 
um, I can do the rest of the assembly next week. I will do a little bit here and I'll finish it off, um, finish it up off camera. For, for this piece, for these pieces I should say, I'm going to adhere these to the holographic circles and these are going to be kind of like little ship windows um, all the way around the card. So I've got my metallic window frame with my sea life inside. So we'll put these aside and we will finish up the card next week. This uh, Knight of Navy cardstock is for the base and for the outside area of the card. So fun, right? So fun. Alrighty. I have a link, by the way. I keep bringing out this um, wonderful stuff from the Country Hive. I have a link for um, accessing their website. This is my adhesive holder. I just love their stuff. They just came out with the eggs, you guys. The eggs and the five inch hexagon hex plates or whatever me, me, uh, metallic hex plate hex trays that's what they're called um so they just came out with those two two new products you want to check them out the link is in the description of my video okay so there's the card so cute right you can push it either way but this way it fits in an envelope this way you just have to get a bigger envelope is all okay you can you can fold it down either direction We'll assemble this one, we'll assemble the submarine one next week, and you'll be able to get information for the submarine one next week. I hope you can join me for that. We have prizes, we have news. Um, we usually do all that stuff here at the end. So uh, let me bring out some other things that are happening in my world. I have partnered with um, a couple resources to get logo merchandise. The last time I did, um, uh, well, the last couple months, we've been doing these class to goes, and I did one where I shared a gift that I received from the Country Cardinal, and they um, made for me a really beautiful tumbler, a skinny tumbler like this. So I decided, you know what? People were asking me how to get one, so I've created um, a new one. This one here, you can purchase this if you'd like. Take it on your crafting retreats. But I've also added some other logo merchandise. So if you're interested in an insulated tumble or a water bottle, I have those. Um, I have shirts. I'll show you that in a minute. I have, what else did I bring out here? I think that's it that I have right now in my possession. Um, this is my, my shirt. <laughs> Stamp your art out. So if you're interested in that stuff, I do have a link to shopping for those products. The store just came out with stuff on Sunday, on Sunday. So, um, and anything that is selling well will stay in the store. Things that maybe don't sell so well will get replaced with other items. I'm always open to suggestions too. There is a mug and a coaster set coming soon to the logo store. Okay, thanks you guys. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, let's talk about um prizes i think everything else i think i've mentioned except for celebration we're still in the midst of celebration when you purchase products from stampin up during last month and this month through the end of february you get to pick freebies so any 50 dollars plus purchase usd so us dollars um a 50 dollars plus order earns you a pick from the celebration product um, offering there's lots of products in there. There's stamp sets, there's ribbon rolls, there's um, packs of designer paper. Uh, if you have been shopping with Stampin' Up! for a while, you've already seen a lot of these things, just know that they did add some items from the annual catalog that they have a surplus in, so they've added a few things in there as freebies as well. Check them out. Um, again, you just go to my website, stampyourartout.com, and you click shop. Okay, I am moving some things on my computer because I want to show you winners. We had some winners that were drawn from last week. Um, those people that commented after the live was done. So if you... <laughs> childhood story here. Yes. Yes, put your childhood story. That's what people are doing. Sorry, Heidi. I keep forgetting to re remind people. Tell me something happy that happened in your, like something, some happy memory from your childhood. I love reading about you guys and, and learning more about you. So anytime you comment too, it gets you entered into a prize drawing. We have some prize winners from the after live comments, the comments that have happened after the live was done last week. 
two up to this morning and I picked two winners. Um, let me grab grab my prize bucket. I have two winners, one from last week, uh, one from Facebook and one from YouTube. Those people will be able to get in on and I have to switch this. Hang on. Oops. Getting too much on my computer here. Okay. So we had some extra celebration goodies from last time that are prizes, prize options. Um, one person did not get back to me yet, so hopefully you guys are watching these videos or checking out my blog posts that are connected with the videos because I announced the winners there too. But these are the prize choices that are left. From last week, we had the name Betty Monroy, who was called out and she did not email me yet, make sure that you reach out to me at stampyourart.com.net at comcast.net so you can claim your prize. If you live outside the U.S., you can still pick something else. I have tutorials that I can offer to you. So Betty Monroy, you also get to pick. Here are the winners. Let's go over to my computer screen and pull up those names. We had Phyllis Zaylor. You are the winner from Facebook. Yay, Phyllis! <laughs> so you get to pick one of those things that we just saw. And then we also had an after live commenter on YouTube, Carmen um, Stillwagon, uh, 2842. You're a winner also. So yay. Let's go back to the desktop and let's do, oops, I disappeared. Here I am. Um, let's show the prizes for this week. And then Trisha is going to draw our winners. Okay, these are products that are not celebration, but they are extra goodies that I have sitting around, you guys. I have the Planted Paradise stamp set. I have In the Moment stamp set. Around the Bend stamp set. Wildlife Wonder stamp set. And I have a set of dies called the Delicate Forest dies. Um, those are the prize picks. Everybody has a choice. And uh, Trish is going to announce our winners for that. So I'm going to go back to my screen over here and see if she has announced. And then we're going to cheer for them all. Yay. When you cheer, you get entered into, uh, well, after live now. Uh, you get entered into a prize drawing for the after live. So come on back. Increase your chances. Watch the video again or at least comment in the after live section. <laughs> Um, oh, I love this, you guys. You keep sharing your memories. This is so, I'm going to love reading these, you guys. Thank you. Uh, so our winners for our current time today are, and I still don't see them announced yet, so I will give it a couple more seconds here, and then maybe, Trisha's here, right, you guys? <laughs> I hope she's here. Yes, she's here. Oh, and I see the names. I just have to scroll. I have to scroll. Hang on. Because I like to put them on the screen for all of you, too. And you know what? Trisha and I were not in the same room, just so you know. So sometimes the comments, yeah, I'm not seeing them on my screen. So hopefully, okay, I'll just have to announce the names because I can't pull them up, Trisha. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, it's Yvette Smith and Arlene Miller. Congratulations to you guys. I don't know why they're not coming up on my iPad. It's so weird. But Yvette Smith and Arlene Miller, you are the winners. Yay. Um, make sure you reach out to me at stampyourartout at comcast.net. I don't have any other announcements for you. Um, we went through the pro promotional things going on. Next week is February 21st, 11 a.m. Central Time, part two. Please come back and visit and check out how we're going to put these into two different hexagon card uh, hexagon platform pop-up pop cards. Can't wait, can't wait to show those to you. Sorry again that I had to put these into two videos, but already we're over on this one. So I'm gonna let you guys all go. Thanks everyone. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.